Hi there and welcome to our first episode of Continence Chats. If you're someone who has uh, continence problems, you'll know that it's often difficult to find helpful information um, about living with a catheter or dealing with continence difficulties. So we've decided to start Continence Chats as a way of ensuring that patients can share their stories and experience with other patients or catheter users. Uh, the idea is that we're going to interview uh, a number of different catheter users um, so they can share their story with you. If you want to take part in Continence Chats, uh, please do get in touch with me below. I'd love to hear from you and I'll give you some more information about how you can do that. Um, today, we're excited to have on the show Tracy Seal. Um, Tracy is a catheter user um, who's had a superpubic catheter for many years now. Um, she helps a lot of other patients through her Facebook group and through um, a local MS group and we're really pleased to have her on board today. So let's begin our first episode of Continence Chats. Thanks for joining us, Tracy. Thank you very much for asking me to, to speak today. I'm really looking forward to this. Great, great. Well, um, let's kick off just asking um, a little bit about yourself. So um, tell, me about, tell me about yourself. Uh, where, are you, where do you live? Uh, what are your interests and hobbies? What do you, what do you spend your time doing? Okay, well, I am 53 years old and I live on the Kent coast, right on the very tip in Thanet, in Kent. It's very sunny um, and it's a, a very bright day today. Um, and yes, I have lots of hobbies. Uh, I paint rocks, believe it or not, um, which I leave around the coastline for the children to find, which brightens oh. their day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, I've also uh, just begun to write music, funnily enough, um, uh, which I'm really enjoying. So, yes, I, I keep as active as I possibly can. And also with my two support groups, um, which keeps me busy on a very daily basis. So, Tell us about those support groups. What do they involve? OK, so the first one is for my MS group. Um, I have MS. I've had it since I was 20. Um, and so I started up a support group about four years ago now um, and we meet locally or we did prior to COVID um, but now we um, we chat weekly online um, and as I'm probably the only one in the group who's had it for 34 years I've probably experienced more than most so can offer the most amount of advice um, and then as a, a roll on from that one, I now run the super pubic catheter group um, because there was a shortfall um, in information for everybody out there. So I felt the need to start up a group and explain everything I, I possibly could that I have been through. Great. Thanks, Tracy. And uh, you've had a great response to that, haven't you, really? And there's how many members in the group now? So. Absolutely, 170 people um, wow. in two years. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So what was it that started you on the journey to needing a superpubic catheter? Um, well, the problem was with MS, um, I had what was called a retaining bladder. Mm -hmm. um, so the bladder was refusing to empty, basically. Um, or it did... Uh, unopportune times um, especially when I was on a train going mm -hmm. into London to work um, I would get off the train and, and the movement from the train would say right bladder you need to empty right now and unfortunately when you lost control or losing control it can become very embarrassing mm -hmm. um, so I had to speak with a urologist um, and discuss what my options were. Mm. And how did that conversation go? Um... Well, in 2011, I had what was a very interesting conversation with a very sympathetic urologist. Mm -hmm. And having discussed everything and what the future would hold for me, um, you know, there are various things out there that can help retrain a bladder. Uh, but I knew from my point of view, which was with MS, that it was unlikely to get better. Mm -hmm. And in, in his own words, it was, um, if you want a, 
a better quality of lie, um, I would recommend going down the superpubic catheter route. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At that point, I'd never even heard of a superpubic catheter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I trusted him mm -hmm. implicitly. He, mm -hmm. he was a very knowledgeable man. And I felt that I had an answer um, to all of my problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and when uh, when the consultant explained the procedure, did you have any any particular fears um, or anxieties about that? Or um... I can honestly say no. Okay. I mean, for some it could be very worrying, um, but for me, I absolutely trusted him when he said that you would have control back, and mm -hmm. that to me mm -hmm. um, was the most important thing in my life to have full control back. Mm -hmm. He said you could choose when you want to go to the toilet. Um, you, you would be able to go through the night without having to get up to go to the toilet, mm -hmm. which for my MS was a bonus. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in all respects, I absolutely jumped off and dived in. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And perhaps there is uh, somebody watching and they maybe have, have just had that discussion with their urologist and... Uh, and they've they've had that option put to them of having a superpubic catheter. Um, what would you say to them if they're thinking, should I go down this route? I think this is a question that often comes up on um, the group. And I should qualify this, that uh, neither of us are physicians. This is purely um, uh, Tracy's personal um, story and, and, uh, and perspective. But what would you say to someone in that position that they've heard that news that you, you could need a superpubic catheter? What, what do you want to do? What would you say to, to, to that? To that individual i would say it can be very daunting the actual thought of it the thought of the operation um how you're going to manage afterwards um i even have dexterity issues um, in a wheelchair um but i would say don't be afraid of it it's something that you can manage and it will make your life a lot better Sure, um, sure. Yes, yeah, so please don't be afraid of it. It is something you will be able to manage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, what is life like with a superpubic catheter? Tell us about, you know, I say a week in the life of Tracy with a superpubic catheter, and, um, and yeah, what's that like? Well, firstly and foremostly, having to um, get up probably was four times a night beforehand, and now I don't have to get up during the night at all. I connect up to a night bag and I can get a full good quality night's sleep, which most people are unable to do. Even without a catheter, um, my husband can get up, get up during the night. So for me to be able to stay in bed is heaven, I must say. Um, and during the day, I can go several hours without even thinking about going to the toilet. Mm -hmm. um, so my days are brighter i can get out more i can go in vehicles without thinking i'm going to have an accident mm -hmm. um it's just something you cannot imagine how incredibly good it can be until you're in this position um, and then you realize it's not difficult um and you will have a good quality of life once again mm -hmm. Have you faced any um, challenges or difficulties since having a, a superpubic catheter? And um, yeah, how would you, how would how have you overcome them, um, if you have? Well, obviously in the beginning, back in two thousand and eleven, and there were no support groups. Um, it's kind of well, here's your operation, here's some products to try, and now you're on your way. And that was the most difficult part was well, where do I get information from? Mm -hmm. um, and can I trust that information? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's all well and good listening to people who are providing products to you. Mm -hmm. um, and I can honestly say there are so many companies out there with products. Um, it's which way do I go? Which product yeah. do I choose? Mm -hmm. That is the most daunting part. And I think if you can join a support group, for super pubic catheters and speak to other people who are using those products mm -hmm. and you will soon learn 
um, which ones are the best ones to use because mm -hmm. obviously your day would be brighter using the best products. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you're using a faulty product that's going to leak or if you're using a product that just does not do what it says on the tin, mm -hmm. if it's causing you problems, um, it can cause you other problems. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. it's best to have the best products and use them to the best ability that you can. Perhaps you could give us an example of um, a problem that you had and how that was solved. Um... Well, I remember in the beginning, there were several problems. Um, I shall start with the catheter. Um, my catheter, um, it was the old latex kind. Mm -hmm. And now obviously we've got um, the new link kinds, which is silicone. Um, and I shall go on to that a bit in um, a bit further on, but um, I was getting what's called granulation. And for some people who are not aware of this, it's like a little bit of overgrowth of skin around the suprapubic catheter hole. It can be very um, worrying to see it to begin with. I remember thinking, oh my goodness me, is this cancer? What, what is this? But it's perfectly normal and nothing to worry about. It's just where the skin is trying to heal over the hole that's been produced. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Now, this only happened when I was using a latex catheter, but since I've switched to silicone, mm -hmm. I've never had that once. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I would say from the start, as soon as you possibly can, if they haven't already inserted a silicone catheter, to switch to silicone. Mm -hmm. Now, it, the old silicone catheters are very, very stiff and can cause pain, and which is why a lot of people say, oh, no, don't use silicone. But with the link soft silicone catheter, there is no problems whatsoever. They're as soft as latex. And I, for one, with MS, can experience pain um, and irritation and all sorts of things far mm -hmm. more than somebody who has not got MS. So sure. for me, it was an absolute perfect solution to that mm -hmm. problem mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then there was also issues with bags in the early days mm -hmm. um, some leg bags are made much thinner than others mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the thinner they are the more likely they are to twist and mm -hmm. if they twist and the flow of urine is interrupted you will start getting spasms and you will think your catheter's blocked but in actual fact, the problem isn't with the catheter, it's with the bag. Mm -hmm. And then obviously at night time, when you then connect a leg bag up to a night bag, if there is an issue there with twisting or a thin bag and flow once again is disrupted, once again, you could have a problem. Sure, sure. That's really helpful. Um, I'm sure there'll be people who are watching and they've uh, maybe even experiencing those difficulties today and think that's something to to think about and how to deal with that. Um, I think we've kind of covered this, but feel free to elaborate further. What advice would you would you give to someone who needs a suprapubic catheter um, and is on that is, has begun that journey and they've decided they're going to have one? I would um, prepare in advance of your operation. <laughs> Make sure you have everything you need in the house before the day of the operation. Um, make sure you have a supply of leg bags, um, leg sleeves um, for your leg, instead of using straps. Essentially, you need a nightstand uh, because sometimes that's not what they supply you, you with in hospital. So you would definitely need a nightstand. Um, but I would also get some products in that's gonna help you to maintain the suprapubic catheter hole. Um, so I personally have swabs, sterile swabs, mm -hmm. um, to clean the area. I have um, baby cotton buds, which only I use, um, which can help clean the area and pop on some hydrocortisone. 1% hydrocortisone cream um, is essential going forward. Mm -hmm. um, and I would also... Um, make sure I have a bag that I can pop everything into that only I use. Um, for reasons of infection control, 
-hmm. and I'm, I'm not talking about COVID, I'm mm -hmm. talking about bacteria. Everyone has bacteria, but what you don't want is somebody else's bacteria getting anywhere near your super pubic catheter hole. And mm -hmm. um, so in the bathroom, make sure you use um, a towel that only you use to wash your hands mm -hmm. um, and make sure you only use that towel before touching and cleaning that area. Mm -hmm. That is essentially how infections begin, is other people's bacteria um, getting anywhere near that hole. Mm -hmm. And I would also say to anyone who has um, a stoma like myself, make sure that when you're removing the stoma device, that there is a barrier between the stoma and your suprapubic catheter hole. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I, I personally use a flannel, um, which I put there when I'm removing and cleaning the device mm -hmm. to make sure that it doesn't cross over, the bacteria doesn't cross over into the suprapubic catheter hole. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's really helpful. What would you say um, to, a, to a patient who um, they've, they've been fitted with a suprapubic catheter and they come across uh, other products um, that they want to try um, and they speak to their district nurse or their GP and their GP or their district nurse pu pushes back and says, well, you can't have those. They're not on formulary or, and even if this patient's having great difficulties, maybe spasms or blocking with their current catheter or their difficulties with their current products, how would you advise someone in that situation, how they're to go forward um, if, if they want to change product? Well, I would say everybody's bodies are completely different mm -hmm. and the choice of products are available to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, if they're suggesting that there is something that you cannot have, um, I would say, don't worry. Um, there, there is a way that you can have that product. And if, for instance, um, they're saying this particular catheter is not available because it's not on the formulary. I would say, well, if there is a specific catheter out there that specializes in ensuring you do not get spasms, it protects the bladder wall, um, it's going to make your life easier. You have every reason to ask for that product. And usually it just means a conversation with your GP. They really are open to suggestions. And um, if you say to them, you know, this product is really going to make my life easier, they would be more inclined to pop it on your repeat list and allow you to order it. And that is the best way to go forward. Ordering your own products. Don't rely on district nurses to supply you with products because they will only supply you with one or two different kinds, which is usually not the best kind to be using. So do your research. Um, if someone says to you, wow, this is a really good catheter, you know, you're not gonna have any problems. It's got more holes for drainage. It's softer for the bladder. Um, it's going to really make things a lot easier for you. I would say, try that catheter first. Yes, you can try all the other catheters out there. There's a few hundred out there. Um, but I would say, go upon a recommendation first because it may make your life so much easier. When I first started out with products, I tried every one from every manufacturer. It took me nearly three years. Three years of trying products that just didn't work um, for whatever reason. And it's not just a case of me being fussy. It's just about getting the best product to make sure you have no issues going forward. Mm -hmm. um, and I can honestly say, out of all of the catheters I've tried, uh, the Link Specialist Tip catheters, the Open Tip and the Opti Tip, I would recommend to everyone. It's actually made my life a lot easier. Um, I can now change my own catheters, which I don't recommend everybody does, but if down the line you feel confident enough into doing so, and it is possible and that you are confident to do that yourself, then 
you're more than able to do it, you can do it. And I had to do it in an emergency once. Um, I thought, actually, do you know what? I can do this. And the link catheters are allowing me to do that without tugging on the catheter when it's removed. And this is the problem with a lot of the other catheters when they have what's called a cuff in at the end of the tip. Um, trying to pull it out is quite painful and can do a lot of soft tissue damage. So I can honestly say with the link catheters, none of that happens. Mm -hmm. And if you feel pain, you will feel no pain. Mm -hmm. um, you will not have issues with, um, you know, when there is a soft tissue damage upon removing the catheter, you're, the, you're then more prone to an infection. Um, and that can be avoided by, again, using the right products. Sure. So I think that's important that patients understand that, that you've got choice. And in fact, as you say, all of the catheter suppliers in the UK offer f samples of their products and mm -hmm. you're free to order those samples. You just go on the supplier website, you can uh, uh, choose uh, the correct size for you. And then when you're next having your catheter fitted, you can uh, uh, ask the district nurse to fit that particular uh, brand of catheter. Uh, same goes with all the accessories. You can get those from all of the suppliers, uh, try them out, find the best ones, and uh, yeah. that will make life easier. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Great. Mm. Um, if there's any other um, ideas or tips that you, you'd like to share, Tracy, with, um, with anyone? We've covered quite a lot of ground, but maybe there's anything else uh, you're thinking of? I, I would just like to assure everybody that if you get down because you're having bladder issues, a super pubic catheter can, can get you right back in check with your life before. Mm -hmm. um, I can now go to um, concerts and not have to run out halfway through and miss some of that. Um, mm -hmm. I can go on long car journeys and, and connect up to a night bag. Um, I can go on a six hour car journey and not need in the toilet. Mm -hmm. Life can be so much better with a super pubic catheter. Um, so I would just say, you know, don't be afraid. Um, mm -hmm. In a short time, you will get to know what you can do, how you can clean it, how you can prevent infections. And if you do get a urine infection, and I'm sure you're, you're used to having them before, if you are having bladder issues, you know that antibiotics can clear all that up. Um, so yes, it's just something I think you've just got to do and don't be afraid. Well, thank you so much for your time, Tracy, uh, today. I'm sure that the things that you shared will be a, a huge help to people who are watching. Um, if you want to join Tracy's group, if you're a super pubic catheter user, you can uh, look in the uh, description below. We'll link to that. Um, if you've got any questions that have been raised by this video, uh, why don't you drop them in the comments? Um, and uh, we'll do our best to, to answer them. Um, you could also contact Tracy directly through the Super Pubic Catheter group if you, if you, uh, if you join that. So um, once again, I'll to say this is the personal opinion of, uh, of, of, of Tracy. It's her story. We're not giving medical advice here, um, but we really appreciate you coming on. Thank you for your time, Tracy. And uh, I, hope I hope you have a great day. I'm glad it's sunny down there because up here in less it's chucking it down i'm in my uh i'm in my study at the bottom of the garden with a metal roof and it's uh, i can hear it pattering away so i'm, oh, <laughs> I'm slightly envious of you but uh great <laughs> thanks for your time tracy take care you're you're very welcome thank you very much Joe. thanks very much bye-bye bye-bye